In today's video, we are going to be attempting to restore and or upgrade this mystery Mac Mini that I bought for $75 on eBay. Now, I don't really know a whole lot about this Mac Mini. I, did you hear that? So something's loose inside the Mac Mini, which is a good sign. And also I can see that the back, the ports here, which is attached to the logic board, isn't seated quite right. So yeah, this, this Mac Mini definitely has a story. I don't know what its specs are at all. I bought it sight unseen. We're gonna see if we can get this thing working. Make sure to get subscribed. This should be a fun one. With so much uncertainty in the market these days, there's one overlooked asset that has a lot more stability than other major asset classes, fine art. Today's video is sponsored by Masterworks, the only platform taking billionaire art collectors head on by offering investment in contemporary art, which has outpaced the S&P 500 in total return by 174% from 1995 to 2020. Masterworks lets you invest in shares of artwork for just a fraction of what they pay to purchase the art. And according to Citibank, art is one of the most stable asset classes from a volatility and loss frequency perspective. Masterworks is the first company to offer paintings filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission as public offerings. On top of that, they returned 32% in 2020. 2020 and in 2021. So far, over 300,000 investors have signed up using Masterworks and a recent offering for work by Banksy sold out in under three hours. They also offer a secondary market where you can sell your shares to other members, similar to how you would sell stocks on popular stock trading apps. And now you too can join a growing community of 317,000 plus members diversifying their portfolios with Picasso, Monet, and more on Masterworks. To check out Masterworks, head over to the link in the video description. And now, back to the video. All right, so what exactly do we have here? Well, according to the model number that was on the eBay listing, this should be a mid-2012 Mac Mini with the 2.5 gigahertz dual-core i5. That's the same processor that you would find in a 2012 13-inch unibody MacBook Pro, but because it's in a Mac mini form factor, it's a lot less expensive, 75 bucks. Now, the 2012 Mac minis were really popular because you could actually configure them with quad-core i7s, which you couldn't do on the later 2014 models. Those were dual-core only. So these were pretty popular, but obviously, even with a quad-core, it, it's not exactly a powerhouse, and this dual-core model is certain to be you know, sufficient for basic computing tasks, but nothing super crazy. But hey, you know what, for 75 bucks, who cares? Of course, we're gonna try it. Now, of course, being a Mac Mini, we need a monitor, and I figured for today's video, I'm gonna whip out a monitor that I've actually had for like six months, but haven't gotten around to using for a video, and that is a 30-inch Apple Cinema display. Oh my God, this thing is massive. Look at it. I'm gonna need to widen this shot so that it will actually fit. All right, there we go, that's, I mean, it's still massive, but that's at least, you know, it fits now. So the reason that I decided to finally break out the 30 inch Apple Cinema display for this video is, well, number one, because I really like the way that these look next to each other. And also because this Mac mini has a Thunderbolt port and there was an adapter that lets you actually use this thing. So it, <laughs> It's a bit of a pain to use a 30 inch Apple Cinema display now, today. This thing is like 16 years old, but it's actually pretty decent. You know, it's 2560 by 1600 when this thing came out. It was the highest resolution display in the world, as well as the largest. But in order to actually pull that off, Apple had to do some weird and proprietary stuff. So here's what it looks like. We have a dual link DVI connection over here. We have a USB pass through. We have a Firewire pass through. And then we have their proprietary power thing that plugged into a special graphics card that you could get with the Power Mac and the Mac Pro. It, well, let's just go ahead and plug in the adapter that I got for this, which will basically allow me to plug in 
the DVI over here, and then the USB over here, and then on the other end of that, we have a Thunderbolt connection into the Mac Mini, and then the USB, which will now pass through the Mac Mini into the display, but then we still need to power the display, so I had to go on eBay and buy this power brick, which we can plug into here, and then we'll plug that in with this normal power supply connection. So yeah, that's what you have to do in order to use one of these things. It's, uh, it's a bit of a mess. Okay, we got a light on the front, a boop, another boop, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <sighs> this listing said it was working, that's why I took the git. There's no RAM. Did I get scammed? <laughs> it said it was working. There's no RAM installed. So, okay, let me go find some RAM and then we'll try this again. Okay, I got some RAM. This time it better work. My expectations for a machine that was listed as working and showed up without any RAM with a screw rattling around in the back, not actually screwed in. My expectations are not high. Oh. Hey, okay, all right. They, they skimped me out of some RAM sticks for $75, but it works. And just like that, we're in. Haha, -ha. looks like we're running macOS Sierra. I actually wanna test out if the USB pass-through on the cinema display is working. Okay, plug the mouse into that. Oh, it's working. Hey, look at that. I have the USB from the monitor plugged into the adapter, plugged into the Mac Mini, and then the mouse is plugged into the monitor. It's, it's not the most simple user experience, but I have to say, this display looks pretty good. I mean, this is from 2006. The, the color accuracy looks really good, and the viewing angles are ridiculous. I'm sitting here at like a 140 degree angle, and I'm not seeing any color shifting. That's pretty crazy. How much did this thing cost back in 2006? All right, so first of all, I was wrong. This thing came out in 2004. This is 18 years old, which is mind blowing. And it originally cost $3,300 in 2004. So let's run the inflation on that. Hey, you know what? That's $4,869. That's, that's Pro Display XDR money. So there you go. This is the Pro Display XDR from 18 years ago. I really like this monitor. Do you guys want to see a whole video dedicated to how this came to be 18 years ago? Let me know in the comments below. But now let's go ahead and check the specs uh, on this Mac Mini. Uh, I am very curious to see what uh, hard drive we have in here. So, oh my gosh. Okay, this has, the, this has the Core i7. This little eBay seller, they were like, oh, I'm gonna take the RAM sticks out. He's gonna think he got scammed. But guess what? They used the wrong model number when they listed this, and it has the quad Core i7, not the dual Core i5. So this is actually a pretty solid machine for $75. Let's see what the storage is. So we have a one terabyte hard drive. Okay, that's not bad. Um, I think what we need to do now is, well, we gotta get this machine updated. So let's go ahead and do some upgrades. All right, so for this upgrade, we are gonna be going from the one terabyte hard drive that's currently installed to one of my trusty favorites, the 240 gigabyte inland professional drives that you can get at Micro Center. These things are awesome, they're really cheap, they're more than fast enough, and they're, they're perfect for a build like this, where it's an older machine, it's not something that you wanna spend a ton of money on in upgrades, this is exactly what we're looking for. Now, what's actually really interesting about these 2012 Mac Minis is they actually support dual hard drives. So if we go ahead and take off this back plate, we can open up this antenna hatch here and that should give us access to the drives. Okay, here we go. So there is drive number one. Okay, so there's a little piece of tape holding that on. And there we go, that is our 
hard drive. So now with the drive out, you can see that there's quite a bit of space underneath it, which is where your second drive could go. Now that's a board out procedure. You have to pull everything out and install this dual drive kit. So I'll link that in the description below. I didn't get it for today's video because we're just gonna stick with the 240 gigabyte SSD. But yeah, theoretically, I could move this hard drive down to the lower level, put the 240 gigabyte on top of it, and then we could have dual drives in this machine, which is really impressive capability for $75. Oh my gosh, I found what was rattling around. This is the little bracket that you slide under the power plug here to prevent it from rotating, but it was like wedged in the back. What? I'm not super concerned about the fact that this logic board is poking out a little bit. It doesn't, oh, you know what? There we go. Now it's not anymore. So we've, we've addressed that concern and I think we're ready to just go ahead and reassemble this Mac with the new hard drive. So let's just go ahead and put in these standoffs and reassemble the Mac mini. And so there we have it. This is now the Mac mini with a solid state drive. I put in 16 gigabytes of RAM. We have a 2.3 gigahertz quad core i7 and we're plugged into a 30 inch Apple cinema display. I updated the Mac mini all the way to Catalina, which is the latest that it will run natively. Maybe in a future video, we can go in and, and upgrade this thing to Big Sur or even to Monterey. But for now, this is Pretty incredible for a machine that I paid $75 for. Now you can get the SSD or, well this one's a 240 gigabyte. Nowadays they're selling 256, a little bit faster as well. You can get those for $29. And then add on top of that 16 gigabytes of RAM. I'll link some in the description below. Sometimes you can find it for cheap on eBay. Sometimes it's like 50 or $60, which is ironically almost as much as the entire machine cost. But, all in all, we are doing really well here. We're talking about easily less than $200 for this entire setup, which is pretty nuts. Or at least that's for the Mac mini part of it. I'm not counting the cinema display. I think I paid 300 bucks for this thing. Now, as for using a Mac mini like this as a main machine, I think it's honestly a really good idea, even though it's no longer officially supported right yet. That's, that's a bit of an annoyance, but we're talking about $75, or if you wanna buy one that you know has RAM in it and an SSD already, you can do some hunting and you can find those for around 200 bucks. This type of build is definitely achievable and I think it offers a lot of value. You're getting, with the quad core version that I have here, a pretty solid amount of performance for a Mac in this price range. I ran Cinebench and we got a score of 3,228 points, which is fairly respectable. And this is honestly not too far off what the 2018 base model Core i3 Mac minis score. That was one of the reasons why this was so popular is because it was very similar in terms of multi-threaded performance to the 2018, but that cost $800 and this was less at the time. Now this is a $200 or less machine and you're still getting that amount of performance. So that's pretty, that's pretty compelling. So would I recommend building a Mac mini like this yourself? Absolutely. If you get this thing, even with eight gigabytes of RAM for under $200, you're getting yourself a very good deal, especially if you already have a monitor. And as for the monitor, I definitely wanna do some more digging with this Cinema HD display because I think it's really, really interesting. So my next goal with it is going to be getting it to work native resolution with you know brightness controls and everything on newer Macs, like Apple Silicon Macs. So definitely make sure you're subscribed to see how that goes. And of course, as usual, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.